Nicky, last night on the Sunday, or sorry, Saturday evening on the Saturday game, Donlo Cusack made a comment that the GA has failed um, hurling. And like you're a former GA president, so I'm sure that kind of cuts close to the bone to some degree. What did you make of the comments and do you think that they're in any way accurate? Well, I think there's a couple of things that are worth, uh, worth recalling. He, he talked about since the war. So I had a look at the, um, the since 19, 1950 and 1922, there have been 73 All-Ireland finals played in both codes. Now, 14 counties have won in football. And if you work an average participation of 32 counties uh, taking part in the championship each year, I know it varies a little. That's an average win of 44% of the counties participating are winning the Sam Maguire Cup. In the same period in hurling, nine counties have won the 73 titles. Now, I'm given an average participation of 14. Now, I'm, I'm probably a little generous there, but I'm allowing for the B champions in the past, the Joe McDonough entrance and all of that. I'm saying 14. And if you use 14 as the average participants, that's a 64% return in hurling. So actually, more counties are winning in hurling since 1950 than have won in uh, Gaelic football. So I think that's important to, uh, to, to, to state that, that, uh, that the impression is being given that, uh, that uh, there's only two or three counties in hurling. But in fact, uh, proportionately, more counties are winning in hurling than have won in football over the same period from 1950 to, 19, to 2022. In addition, in terms of the supports that are there for hurling, now, I'm, I'm not all fair with what's been happening post-COVID. I'm not involved. But prior to that, I had some involvement in Croke Park. And there's significant funding in relation to specific uh, coaching officers around the country, hurling coaching and hurling coaching personnel around the country. Now, particularly north of the line from Dublin to Galway, it must be said. There's lots of supports for competitions. There has been subsidies for helmets and hurlies. And, and I would estimate that uh, certainly over the last uh, six, to, six to ten years, there's probably been at least six million euros spent in relation to hurling in one way or another. And... Uh, in fact, when Liam O'Neill was president in his uh, parting address, he asked for a million euros to be put into hurling for uh, Carlo Westmeath, uh, Carlo Westmeath, uh, Antrim and uh, Leash, those four counties. Now, often he made the case that they should have been included as well, and they were. So that million euro was 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 split over for five years, 200,000 a year, 200,000 for the five years, 40,000 a year. And there was a group set up within Leinster Council of which I was involved in with Michael Dempsey and uh, Shane Flanagan. And we monitored how those counties were going to spend that money uh, over the period of time. Now, Antrim were not included in it, which was probably a mistake. They were let do their own thing. But leave that aside, there was, a, there was a lot of work went on then to see how could those counties, by using that money, bring them up to the level of preparation of the Kilkenny's and the Tipperary's in the water, just as an example. And there were some big improvements made, and the management teams in the counties at the time bought into that. So it's very unfair to be saying there hasn't been an investment by the GA. But let's be honest about it, you guys are too young. I made a speech back at a congress back in Cavan many years ago where I talked about hurling dying on his feet. And that came about because Tommy Barrett, who you, you guys know, former Tipperary secretary, and I were chairing a committee, or he was the chair, I was the secretary, back in those days. And we, we did a survey around the country. And we saw that there was individuals in the GA were openly stopping people playing hurling in some counties. That's not the case now. We have a vibrant, five-structured hurling championship. And while we always have to do more for hurling and we always have to continue to invest in hurling, I think when people are making comments on TV about this whole area, I think they're uh, they're very low on facts or information when they make those points. Yeah. Shane, Shane, just can I say uh, on the same thing, look, a little, Don Logan, fairness to him, he's very provocative. He gets the debate going on hurling, which, you know, it's it's always welcome. But, you know, again, going back to some of the stuff he's been saying, I just think makes no sense. Um, so listen last Friday to the, the, the hurling nation, and he's talking about getting, you know, pointing to the example of rugby um well, Sarah, like the rugby club scene has been, amateur rugby has been obliterated. Is that the way the GA wants to go? Like the the professional scene and the provinces are flying, but like, the, you know, to the detriment, the, the club, Ireland had a hugely thriving club scene um, where the clubs were the bedrock and that has been obliterated. And if that is the view uh, where the GA should be going, that we have inter-county franchises or big setups and the club scene is obliterated, I just think that's, crazy way to go um you know talking about getting guinness back involved i think the ga have taken a really good positive you know the high moral ground to to kind of remove drink sponsorship again while other sports haven't and we've seen the problems with gambling and betting across 
you know, in soccer in particular, they're already um, way behind the GA and they're only looking at it properly. So that idea of kind of getting the Guinness back involved, and I know their marketing and um, was superb back in the day, but like things have moved on. The, the other thing about, you know, automatic uh, promotion for the likes of Carlo and all that, and there, again, listening to Johnny Kelly saying the yo-yo effect is difficult, but that doesn't work. Like the jeopardy of the hurling championship is what has turned it into a brilliant championship. So if you give teams um, uh, automatic passage, like how the practicality of that, like it sounds nice in theory, but it, it doesn't make any sense if you have a, a hurling championship where teams can't get relegated as is. So, I, you know, there's a, a the, the the mentoring thing and putting like the GPA tried that celebrity bonus store version. It didn't work at all. As Nikki says, there's actually a huge amount of really good positive work going on on the ground. You look at the the coaching tournaments, the Celtic Challenge is a wonderful tournament that involves teams from every county in Ireland, multiple teams. Uh, that's the model where, you know, Cork, Tip, Dublin have multiple teams in Galway as well. So this idea as well, as well that, you know, the GA failed hurling. The, um, he said, yeah, the, talking about a, 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 can a, a child in Sligo or Carlo or wherever win in All-Ireland, like Carlo just won in All-Ireland, you know, a couple of weeks ago. So like the, the tiered competition, every child in this country now, anyone who wants to play the game, any adult has a chance, a realistic chance of winning in all Ireland. I've seen them first first hand and the, the joy that brings you a look at Carlo. So yeah, like I, I just Shane, I, if you just I think there's actually as Nicky says there's a huge amount of Shane, if you look at Carlo Carlo are part, at all levels are participating and have been since I was involved here in Kilkenny as chair, have been participating in Kilkenny leagues every year. Yeah. And Carlo teams have been winning the Kilkenny All County Junior Hurling League on a, on, on a regular basis. Kilkenny bring in teams from Kildare as well. Nace, I think, I think Minutes are in this year. Lee should be invited in. Hurling has got to understand that why, okay, while we have championships in counties, I, I accept they're sacrosanct. County boundaries shouldn't be sacrosanct when it comes to leagues and other competitions. Uh, Philip talked about the Celtic Challenge and all of that. There are plenty of ways hurling can spread its wings. It doesn't have to be confined to the county boundaries or provincial boundaries. And Martin Fogarty proved that when they developed the whole Tarn Oak League up in Ulster and the Ulster Leagues and all of that. So, and it involved teams from uh, Connacht and Ulster and all of that. So when it comes to hurling development, county and provincial boundaries shouldn't matter. I accept when it comes to championships, the county boundaries are sacrosanct. No problem with that. So that's where the little bit of ambition for hurling needs to be. Forget county and provincial boundaries when it comes to developing the game. And uh, and I think there's an opportunity then uh, for just, any young lad who wants to play. Yes, Phil. Yeah, and just uh, just on that, Nicky, again, Shay, actually, you know, I did a uh, kind of big piece with Martin Fogarty a couple of weeks back. And um, again, like he... Kind of said right don Logue was very good and uh, thought he was dead on and raising the the idea of who's standing up for hurling you know the ga go debate should these things be be you should it be behind a paywall or not like they're they're really relevant and um, important issues and um, the fact that so like i i rang martin Fogarty because like he was the the um obviously national um development coordinator and that position no longer is in place so again there is that idea who's standing up for hurling's interest but martin folk he said the development of hurling boils down to clubs he said it's numbers game in car you take carlo or oh, how do we you know instead of giving them automatic promotion what's not mentioned enough is it boils down to the bloody clubs all the time and, and we're talking to brian tracy he said instead of having two senior clubs or four senior they're looking at at the six and looking at eight and that's how you build a base but the, this idea the intercounty doesn't exist in its own and the talk is always intercounty inter like it all comes from the from the clubs and that's Martin Vogley said it's a numbers game it's a clubs game that is how you build the game fundamentally and look and you look at you know the Dublin model the coaching model has been brilliant there in um in just putting the numbers through the roof and bringing Dublin up to a level at, at every grade Okay, well, look, Nicky, we'll uh, let you go there. Really appreciate you joining us this morning. Some great thoughts as always. All right, guys, we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Cheers, Nicky.